Hi, my name is Emily the Songbird, and I am grateful to be with you here today. My superpower is helping people to find the music within them. 20 years ago, actually 15 years ago, I was called on a hero's healing journey around the world. I witnessed a cremation ceremony in the Ganges River, trekked the hills of Nepal, and landed a job in Portugal where I moved into the room of a woman who was known as a sound healer. And I hadn't heard that term before, but little did I know that I would be following in her footsteps and that I believe I was called there to be anointed with becoming a sound healer. And it's been quite a journey. I've been a music teacher for many years and a performer. Um, and I have been on this quest to heal myself, essentially. When, when I was a little girl, I loved to sing and dance with my father. He would hoist my, this is my six-year-old, well, maybe she's about three, but he would hoist me up in the air, pigtails flying, as we belted out the cathartic tunes of Willie Nelson and Waylon Jennings. And at that time, in that place, I felt more alive than I ever, ever did any other time. It was like music opened me to the expansiveness of what I really am and what we all are, which is vibration. And even more, it was a vibration of love that I connected with. And so now I've been a, a songwriter and a sound healer for many years, and every song that I write about is about love. At the end, I'm gonna share a little song that I wrote, and love is the prevailing theme of the music that I write and create. And so this journey has, when I was 21, I um, got a guitar for my birthday, and I wanted to express so much, all the deep emotion that I had inside of me, but because I had been so shut down um, from being, as I was a little girl, I felt ashamed of my voice and my expression. And so one of the things that I did when I, I was in Portugal was I learned about the chakras or the energetic systems, the seven main energetic systems of the body. And they are behind me. There's a picture of this chart and actually the root one is down below here. It's that red one. So, um, and each one of those chakras has a, not only a color, but a sound that goes with each one of the chakras. So this microphone here for a minute. And so this journey led me to work for two years when I was teaching at a school in Portugal. I was learning about my energy. I was learning about each one of the, the chakras and the, the healing power of each of those chakras. And, and then I moved to Spain and I uh, became a sound healer in the hills of Alicante, Spain. And so I learned um, and experienced the healing power of the voice. So today I would like to start you on this journey. There is so much to the journey and it really requires a um, an exploration on your part. It really requires being able to release that perfectionist and that critic and that saboteur. And those were all characters along my journey that when I was working um, with the, the sound healer in Portugal, because I actually, she was my guide for a while. And I remember how terrified I was in the beginning just to make sounds. And she had me do sounds and movement with my body and it was absolutely terrifying. So if you feel that you need that extra guidance, um, I'm available for private coaching through this journey because it's not necessarily easy. And 
there's a, and I also have written a book that um, goes through the journey that, that I discovered. It's an archetypal journey of um, healing your, your voice and your life. And it's a journey that I've taken many people on um, throughout my musical, um, musical journey and magical journey. So I'm gonna start us off today with the healing power of breath. I have in my book, I have a peace practice and it starts with the breath. Life starts with the breath. And so babies know how to do it so naturally, right? They just breathe from the deepest part of their being. And, but when we become adults, we shut off, we, we shut off the breath. We oftentimes breathe from up here and you can tell because if your voice uh, sounds strangled, uh, there was a point in Portugal that I did, I started to do some Gabrielle Roth work where I was, I took a workshop and I was learning the, the, to move out um, this emotion that was in my cells. And what came out was rage for me. And I remember at one point we had to dance and be witnessed in it. And I danced and, and people around me were saying it looked like my, I, I needed to use my voice because it looked like I was being strangled. And when I started to use my voice, there was just this rage that came out, just lifetimes of rage. And by the time the workshop was done, there were 40 people just staring at me and I didn't know what to make of any of it. I had no idea what I was holding inside of me. So if you feel this way, um, I, I can help you with this. And it, it will change your whole life because that's what it did for me. It led me on a completely different trajectory. And, and now, and, and it just keeps unfolding. So the breath is so key. And you can start, and some of you may be familiar with this through meditation and yoga. It's, it's not really any different, but, um, but the rhythmic breathing or that diaphragmatic breathing is when you get deep enough in your breath that you can drop down, the, the diaphragm is this membrane um, wraps around this area of your body. And when you breathe in properly with that diaphragmatic breathing, I guess I don't wanna use the word properly, that brings up the perfectionist, but you breathe in fully, that the diaphragm, the lungs will open up as the ribs expand, keep the shoulders down, and then that membrane flattens out so that the lungs can expand. And when you get that that air, I keep saying proper, when you get that air, it will fill up, it can fill up this entire area of your body. And I know I'm seated, so I want you to be able to see this. But, oops, and this microphone keeps falling, but that's okay, because I'm working through my perfectionist. And so it just will expand. So as you inhale, so inhale for four beats and you can inhale through your nose or mouth. Um, I'm working on doing it more through my nose right now because I started this habit of opening my mouth when I'm sleeping and so my mouth's getting dried out. But anyway, you can explore and experiment with that. So inhale, one, two, three, Four, and the shoulders stay down, but there's an expansion in those ribs. And, and what you can do is you can practice just concave, you know, just caving in and then practice. Put your hands, you see how my hands are along my sides, and then I breathe in one, two, three, four. And it's gonna feel good because there's just a great expansion that happens down below here. And then what you can do with this exercise, and you can also do it with your hands, so you guide your body. So much of, of singing is a body, is a full body experience. It's not just with the voice and it's not just with the head. So it's really getting in touch with the, and filling the voice, filling the body with the voice. And so as you inhale for four beats, one, two, three, four, you hold it for four, one, two, three, four, and then exhale. And I like to exhale in a, like a sound. It's like the sound that when you are um, blowing out of a straw, so it's like and then you inhale again and you can go do the journey again. And so the, the next part of it is once you are start to, to get into that rhythmic breathing, then the next part of it is actually 
um, releasing the sound. And this is so key. So a lot of people who take singing lessons, and there's a part in the journey for this for sure, that they try to get the right sounding note, but the right sounding note is if you, if you have emotional things to work through and you have inner voice issues to uh, to work through, I don't want to call them issues, but you have inner and an inner voice journey to go on, then you, it's really first and foremost about freeing the voice. And I have a really fun story in my book. Um, a student, when I first came down to Santa Barbara, uh, where I live, that there was a student who I was teaching, one of my very first students down here, um, I was teaching through a music store and he wanted to sing. He had played the guitar for years and he was singing with a, a gal who I was also teaching her and her family. And he, but he, he couldn't free himself to do it. He had such a strong critic and actually he drew a great picture of the critic in the book. I'm gonna see if I can find it really quickly. But, um, oh, here it is, look at this, this critic. <laughs> he kinda looks like that. But anyway, um, so one time we were sitting in a lesson uh, and I had this idea, it was the holiday time and there were some reindeer ears uh, in the wall. I was teaching at the time at a children's music program called Kinder Music and um, there were some reindeer ears in this in this room. And so I, um, I had this idea to put, for him to put those reindeer ears on and to sing from that place. And so he did. And all of a sudden, his voice became free because he stopped focusing on his voice and what it sounded like. And that is the ego play, right? There's the ego is there to protect yourself and, and the voice is a very, very vulnerable place. And so it's really, really key to keep, create a safe space. And then we have to free the voice. So the way that we do that is um, through what's called a song siren. And those sirens were the ones enticing the Odyssey, um, Odysseus on the, the Odyssey, right? This is my book called An Odyssey of Song. And so they would pull them off course with the beautiful sound of their voice. It was a wailing sound. And in Portugal, they actually have a, a type of music called fado where they are wailing too. And it's a crooning kind of sound. You hear it in Ireland too. Actually, there are traditions all over the world. And so we're getting that emotion out in the voice. So what I would suggest is instead of focusing on trying to sound right in your own mind, is to release, release the energy and the emotion because this is the beginning of the hero's journey. It's really about the release. And there may be emotion and you may be um, at, you may be stopped from the emotion that's coming. And so, there's a, um, there's a real process there. So anyway, so take a nice deep breath and then you could do that rhythmic breathing piece. So you inhale for four beats, one, two, three, four. You hold for four, one, two, three, four, and then you release. And then you inhale and then you do the siren. And so with this, you start at your highest range and you go to your very, very lowest range. And so that is a really good exercise to practice. You can do it daily. You can do it on any sounds, the vowel sounds or the chakra sounds, which I will, I will do in another video or audio. There's, there's so much to go through. So anyway, but I know I have some ukulele students as well, and I wanted to give you um, an exercise that you can do on the ukulele if you are playing to practice these sounds and this, this toning. So um, if you ever saw The Sound of Music, you know that song, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do, which is your C major scale. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do, Do, Ti, La, So, Fa, Mi, Re, Do. So what 
I love about The Sound of Music um, is that that is the, the basic building blocks of how you make music. So, you know, D, a D, a D, a D, Ray, and Papa Fulton Sun. It goes through each one of those tones is um, becomes a line in that song. And so it's a really wonderful, playful way to get into the energy of the child, which is a really good way to free yourself. And I also start in my book with the, the celebration of that child, because a lot of times if we're caught up in the critic or the perfectionist, we're, we're um, not, we're denying that, um, that expression of the child. So this exercise is Sanskrit, and it's it's the Sanskrit way of equivalent of doing the scale for that C, D, E, F, G, B, B, C. But instead, we sing this um, healing uh, tone, which is, it's Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Da. So those are Sanskrit tones and a really beautiful way to start to explore those Sanskrit tones is through chanting. Now there are the sounds of the chakras and then there are also chants that you can do. And in the background, you maybe I don't know if you can hear the music or not, but I often play Snotam Kaur and she is a beautiful American singer songwriter, but she also does Sanskrit chanting and she's a uh, yogi as well. Um, and so uh, in Kundalini Yoga, there are uh, a number of chants, but this is one uh, that you can explore those Sanskrit tones and it's a really beautiful one. And you can, if you're playing the ukulele, you can do it on the ukulele as well. It goes like this. It's Ra, Ma, Da, Sa, Sa, Se, So, Hum. And when you practice this, it's just like the vowel sounds. A, A, E, O, U. If you get the breath behind them, you can practice elongating those vowels. And a big part of singing is elongating the vowels. So it's like. is the C, E minor, F, the C. And if you're interested in playing the ukulele or the guitar, I have classes on that as well, and also an inner, um, inner guitar and ukulele course that I will be offering to get you ready to play one of those instruments. So before I um, leave you to your exploration with the sound, I just wanted to, my little girl, that inner, inner child, Emma Who Blazes With The Sun, is the one who creates. She is such a grand creator for me, and she always loves to share one of her creations. So I am going to share a song that I wrote, which is, um, oops, where is it? Oh, yes, I said that I always write songs about love. This is called Love Is Who I Am. It's a lovely, lovely world, because love is who I am. It's a lovely, lovely world, full of family and friends. If you feel funky and blue and you think the world's forgotten you, join me in this happy tune. 
I think that it will cure you too. And you're welcome to sing along if you'd like. So it goes like this. It's a lovely, lovely, lovely world. Because love is who I am. It's a lovely, lovely, lovely world. Full of family and friends. If you feel funky and blue. And you think the world's forgotten you. Join me in this happy tune. I think that it will cure you too. Because it's a lovely. of this odyssey with your voice and if you're interested and you'd like to do I offer a six-month coaching package uh, where we meet every other week on zoom and I will send you videos like this and PDFs and audios to practice and so I'm doing that and I also have other courses um, of course working through your perfectionist and your critic deepening that and um, also have courses on guitar, ukulele, and piano as well. So I hope that you have a wonderful day. Please check out my podcast, Emily the Songbird. It's Emily the Songbird FM at Anchor. It's on Anchor. And you can go to my website, emilysongbird.com, for more information. Thank you so much and namaste. <laughs>